Good day, people. This video is about the voices of characters you hear on shows but never see them. So let's begin. Robert Cleveland Johnson was an American actor and voice actor who played supporting roles on series television and in films from the late 1950s until a few years before his death in 1993. Johnson is probably best known as the voice behind the scenes who gave special agents Dan Briggs and Jim Phelps their recorded briefings on the television series Mission Impossible. Exactly what recording were you looking for? Vaughn and G by Ernest Vaughn and the Fan Symphonic Orchestra, 1963. Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> Mr. Briggs, General Rio Dominguez, the dictator of Santa Costa, makes his headquarters in the Hotel Nacional. Mr. Briggs, your mission, should you decide to accept it, would be to remove both nuclear devices from Santa Costa. But of course, should you or any member of your IM force be caught or killed, the secretary will disavow any knowledge of your actions. As usual, this recording will decompose one minute after the breaking of the seal. The voice was never identified by name, title, or position, and was only heard in recordings, but nevertheless became one of the most iconic features of the show. Prior to his work on Mission Impossible, Johnson frequently provided the voices of numerous alien creatures on The Outer Limits. He was uncredited for all, except for his work on The Alien, Senator, in the episode, Fun and Games. For many MASH fans, a lingering question remains in the back of their minds when the PA sounds. Who is the voice making these announcements? The MASH announcer adds a little bit of mystique to the 4077, but for the attentive listeners, you likely deduced it wasn't just one actor behind the mic of the PA. On MASH, at least three cast members can be heard making announcements over the PA. Starting right in the pilot episode where Jamie Farr does all the announcements before we ever see Maxwell Klinger on screen. Attention, all personnel, both day and night shifts will be confined to duty in the admitting ward tomorrow night. All other activities are canceled. There will be no exceptions by order of the acting commanding officer, Major Frank Burns. Besides Jamie Farr on the PA, there was Todd Sussman from 1973 to 1979. Also, Sal Viscuso from 1976 to 1979. Viscuso later shows up as Father Timothy Flotsky in the show Soap. There seems to be some arguments as to one of these actors ever being on the PA. If you would like to test your ears, let me tell you a few of the episodes each did. Jamie Farr not only did the pilot, some episodes he did were Father's Day and Operation Friendship. Some of Sussman's were Abyssinia Henry, Five O'Clock Charlie, Moose and Men, and welcome to Korea. A little cheat here because he did appear in an episode as Private Danny Baker in Operation Noselift, Season 2, Episode 18 in 1974. Some of Viscuso's were Baby It's Cold Outside, Potter's Retirement, Dear Comrade, and Preventive Medicine. And as for Jamie Farr actually being on the show, well, in October 1972, he was hired for one day's work on the fourth episode of MASH as Corporal Maxwell Klinger. Klinger provided comic relief in his desperate attempts to be given a Section 8 discharge by wearing elaborate women's outfits. Klinger. 
Nice outfit. Well, thank you, sir. It's from the Shirley Temple collection. With accessories such as boas, a fruit hat, and fashion headscarves. At the time, Jamie Farr was still a struggling actor and was most concerned about the 250 paycheck from the MASH job, so he could buy groceries and pay rent. He never expected to be invited back for several more episodes. For several years, the producers and the studio dodged his request for a contract, which Farr suspected was so they didn't have to increase his salary. He was finally hired as a series regular on MASH, beginning with the season four in 1975. And though Gary Berghoff, as Radar and others, used the PA, these other three actors were on hand to whip out some comic relief. And once Jamie Farr was a permanent cast member, he was no longer in this category. This first set is a sample from each. First Jamie Farr, then Todd Sussman, then Sal Viscuso. Attention, all MASH personnel. Tonight's War Department film on how to lead a good, clean life has been canceled due to unusually heavy indifference. <laughs> Will the owner of a, a red pickup truck, Illinois license LU6751, please fly back to Chicago and remove it from in front of the Y. Attention, Corporal Klinger, report to Colonel Potter's office on the double and bring your lawyer. Now that you've had a sample, I've mixed up the order with new samples. Put your guesses in comments. Who is the first, second, and third? Let's test your ears. Attention all personnel. Attention all personnel. We've got people coming in, folks, with more wounded than their pride. Let's go, as in now. Attention Major Houlihan, last call for Major Houlihan. You have a phone call. Oh, by the way, it's your father. Attention all personnel. Attention. Three minutes to Charlie. Repeat. Three minutes to Charlie. On to the next show. And the person that belongs to this voice, it's going to surprise you. Soap premiered on Tuesday, September 13th, 1977 at 9.30 p.m. The episode was preceded by a disclaimer that the show was part of a continuing character comedy that included adult themes and that viewer discretion was advised. The disclaimer was both displayed on the screen and read by announcer Robert Ray. He did the opening narration to the show. This is the story of two sisters, Jessica Tate and Mary Campbell. Do you recognize this voice? Probably not, but I think you'll recognize it here. Yes, Rod Roddy. Robert Ray was an American radio and television announcer. He was primarily known for his role as an offstage announcer on game shows. Among the shows that he announced were Woo! and Press Your Luck. Robert is widely recognized by the signature line Come On Down from The Price is Right which originally was branded by Johnny Olson, who died October 1985. The mysterious unseen millionaire private investigator Charles Townsend in the crime drama Charlie's Angels, 1976 to 1981. The show starred Kate Jackson, Jacqueline Smith, and Farrah Fawcett, making stars of all three, but catapulting Fawcett to iconic status. Good morning, Angels. Good, Good morning, morning, Charlie. Are we ready, Bosley? This is a tough one, Angels. Doubt if I could do it myself, even if I wanted to. Needs the feminine touch. That's the voice of John Forsythe, who became the highest paid actor on television on a per hour basis. Shows on camera stars often worked 15 hour days, five days a week. Forsythe's lines for an entire episode 
would be recorded in a sound studio in a matter of minutes, after which he would have lunch in the network's commissary and then leave. Charlie's Angels was the show that ushered in the phrase, Jiggle TV. Aaron Spelling called John one very late night, asking if he would be Charlie, because the original actor he had for the part had a drinking problem. Aaron had three days to get a replacement because he was going to pitch the show to executives the following Monday. John was in his bathrobe when he went to the studio that night to do the voiceover. John thought he was doing the one episode, but Aaron talked him into doing the entire series. Anytime you saw the back of Charlie or a hand or an arm, that was not John. That was a fill-in, because to be physically in the show, Aaron would have had to pay a lot more money. <laughs> he did other voiceovers. One in particular was World of Survival. But many of you might remember John Forsythe better from the popular series Dynasty, which premiered January 12, 1981. Mahil known for her roles as various characters in the Star Trek franchise, once known as Nurse Christine Chapel, also known as the second in command on the original Star Trek in the episode The Menagerie. The Menagerie was created as a means to reuse footage from the episode The Cage, the unaired 1965 pilot episode of Star Trek. Mahil Barrett was the wife of Star Trek's creator, Gene Roddenberry. She also appeared as Lexana Troy in The Next Generation. But most of all, Mahil Barrett Roddenberry was the voice of the computer. Program desired location. Earth, United States, San Francisco, California. Time period. 1941 A.D. File or access code. File Dixon Hill. Private detective. Enter when ready. Law and Order aired its entire run on NBC, premiering on September 13, 1990, and completing its 20th season on May 24, 2010. The voice on this series is known for providing the opening narration of all U.S. shows in the Law & Order franchise. He was hired by series creator Dick Wolf. This voice has also provided voices for Family Guy and Rugrats Movie. He was a narrator for The Faith Rewarded, the historic season of the 2004 Boston Red Sox. He narrated Ruby Ridge, Anatomy of a Tragedy on Investigation Discovery, and others. In the criminal justice system, the people are represented by two separate yet equally important groups, the police who investigate crime and the district attorneys who prosecute the offenders. These are their stories. The voice belongs to Steve Zernkelton. Steve is an American voice actor and former politician from Maine. Zernkelton is best known for providing the opening narration of all U.S. series in the Law & Order franchise. And as a side note, Stephen Hill, who was also in Law & Order, was also in the original Mission Impossible, which you saw earlier. Well, this is the end of the video. Don't forget that Test Your Ears segment at time mark 7:16:22. Anyway, glad you stuck around to the end. Please subscribe. It's free. Of course, no one places value on anything they get for free. In addition, if you click the bell, you'll get notified when I place my next video. And thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>